way that I were to respond to everybody. It's interesting here because he goes, For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Now it's becoming tax time. And it is hard to love a tax collector. Because they take our hard-earned money. It's hard to love the IRS. But the funny thing is, the guy that wrote this, Matthew was a tax collector. And he's saying, even before I knew the Lord, I still love my family. But we're supposed to love those who we don't like. We're supposed to love those who only Jesus could love. And that's tough. That's tough to do. You know, love is not just ignoring. You can't just ignore people you love. You know, if I'm ignoring my wife, then she's not really feeling loved at the time. Usually if I'm ignoring my wife, there's going to be a problem. And some of you are smiling and laughing. I know, no, you know, you must know Pam. But no. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I'll take that one later. Uh, but we do. Sometimes we, we you know, we respond even to those that we love with a little animosity or a little uh, a little bit of a problem sometimes, you know, you, you argue maybe with your spouse and you really, you know, if you love them there ought to be a, a way we work together. But we still come back to that love that holds us together. It's going to be 41 years for Pam and I in February. And, you know, in those 41 years, love has been the thing that's kept us together, no matter what has happened. And that's the way we should be with everybody. People are going to do things you don't like. But that love should override everything that happens in your life. You know, Right now, this world is built up with an awful lot of hate. We're hearing a lot of hate on all the newscasts. If you read the newspaper, there's a lot of hate built up. And some of it's being done by Christians, those that claim the name of Jesus. But what we can control is what we do and how we feel. Because people see us and they will be reflected by what we do. It will reflect on Jesus. Now, we come up with a lot of excuses for why we don't like somebody. We can come up with a lot of reasons of these things. But Jesus doesn't give us any excuse whatsoever. He says, love your enemies. Don't just love your enemies. Love those who persecute you. Who do something against you. Because it says God put the rain on both of us. And put the sunshine on both of us. The righteous and the unrighteous. And that means He put us in this world together. We are here for a reason. You're not just here because of happenstance. You're not just here because of luck. You are here because God loved you. God created you. God doesn't make any junk. God made you. And then, He died for you. He knew you couldn't be perfect. He knew you were all sinners. 
He knew you all needed a Savior. That this love we couldn't do on our own. You cannot love your enemies on your own. You can't love people who persecute you on your own. You can only do that through the power of Jesus Christ's love and what He did for you. Because when He died for you, you weren't living for Him. You weren't serving Him. And so He has shown us through that that we can love each and every person. Because if we become Christ-like, He died for everybody. Now, it doesn't mean everybody's going to be saved. Don't get mixed up by that. But everybody has that opportunity. He died for everyone. He died for those who blaspheme His name. He died for those who kill other people in the name of other gods. He died for those who do atrocities to children. He died for those who you see on the post office wall. He died for those you see over in the Middle East beheading the people. And we're supposed to love them. We reach them through love. And that's hard to do. Let's turn over and in verse 6 or verse seven, chapter 7 verse 12 Jesus says in everything therefore treat people the same way you want them to treat you. For this is the law and the prophets. And He's telling us that anybody and everybody we run into, we're supposed to treat them the way we want to be treated. And we want to be treated with love. We don't want to be treated with evil, with anger. It doesn't say other people will treat you the way you want to be treated. But it holds you accountable for what you do. Jesus is talking to Christians as a whole. All those that know Him as Lord and Savior that we are to love everybody. But He's also talking to each of us individually. And you could put names in there. You could put, put uh, people groups. Uh, you know, if you, you grew up during the 60s, there was a lot of race riots. And now there's a lot of race riots. 50 years later, And where is the voice of the Christians? Is it being heard? And there's a lot of animosity to people of different religions. Now I'll make it very clear, I think there's only one way of salvation, and that's through Jesus Christ. The Word of God makes that very clear. But when it says, love your enemies, doesn't mean that I'm supposed to hate the Muslims. I'm supposed to reach out to them with love. The love of Jesus. I'm not supposed to hate the drug addict. I'm supposed to reach out to them with the love of Jesus. I'm not supposed to hate anybody that's out there. We're supposed to reach them with the love of Jesus. You know, think about what the number one thing is in this world that you truly love. And the thing that is first on your love list.
And it should be Jesus Christ. If you want your marriage to be strong, you should have Christ in the center of it. Not out on the edge, but in the center. And if you want your relationship with your kids to be strong, you want to put Christ in the center of it. And if you want any relation to be strong, you've got to put Christ in the center of it. Now, you can say, well, I, I tried that and it didn't work. I, I did that with my spouse. I did that with my children. I did that with my friend. And we still broke apart. We don't get along now. The only thing you're accountable for is what you do. You can't force anybody else to do anything. But you've got to keep those doors of love open. You've got to take your own self and continue putting Christ in the center of that relation on how you respond. There's going to be a lot of problems each and every one of us is going to face from here on out. As Corey Shelton shared with his struggles that he's gone through this year, each of us are going to face struggles. Each of us are going to face problems. We're going to have struggles with people. You can try everything that you know how. And you can love somebody with all your heart. And you can put Christ at the center of that relationship. But if that person chooses not to do the same thing, you cannot be held accountable for that. You can only be held accountable for what you do. And so you continually do it. God has called us to be perfect. That's powerful. You know, sometimes we as parents, we expect our kids to be perfect. I've raised a lot of kids. Some of them give me a lot of grief telling me I treat Mandy like she's perfect. That's the oldest one. But she's not. And the other 13 could all tell you she wasn't. But sometimes we just take that being perfect and we push it aside saying I can't really do that. It's interesting that right here, before he tells us that, he's talking about love. And then he says, Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. God doesn't tell us to do something we can't do, but he gives us a goal we're supposed to always be shooting for. If you're not attempting to be perfect, you never will be. There's going to come a time I know I'll be perfect. That shocks some of my family. They're going, when will that be that? But when we go to be with the Lord, we will be perfect. But until that time, that's supposed to be my goal. If you go out shooting a gun, you put a target out there and you're shooting at that target, you don't try and miss the target all the time. Oh, you might miss it sometimes. You might miss it by quite a ways sometimes. But your object is still to hit that target right in the center. And that's the way we should be working at all times with all people is to love completely. Love totally with all our heart. We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. We've all made mistakes. But we don't 
hate that and never hold a grudge, ever give up. We're just to continue loving no matter what. Loving from our heart. Because when it all comes down to it, the only one that really ever had the right to say, hey, every one of you deserve to go to hell. He chose to die for us. He chose to love us no matter what we did. And that if we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, it is all forgiven. It's all wiped clean. And if He can wipe my slate clean, how can I ever hold anything against anybody else? If He can love me, how can I not love other people? Because He tells me to. The one that could have sent me to hell for all eternity, instead, chose to take me to be with Him for all eternity. So until that time comes, I should always seek to do what He tells me. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank You so much for Your gift of forgiveness. We thank You so much for Your love for us that took our punishment of eternal hell. And you took that, Lord, and gave us your love. And then you asked us to pass your love on to others. Lord, I ask you to work on every person's heart here to give them a love that comes only from the Lord and Savior. A love from knowing what they were saved from and passing that on to others. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody rise and turn to him 473.